<laughs> Welcome back to Open Line tonight. We are talking with two ladies from Planned Parenthood. Let me introduce you once again to Francie Hunt with the uh, Executive Director for the Tennessee Advocates for Planned Parenthood and also Carrie Adams, the CEO of Planned Parenthood, both here in Middle and also East Tennessee. Thank you all for being here Thank and you. taking these Our calls. Pleasure. Thank Our you. pleasure. Um, hopefully it's a night of education, mm -hmm. also a great conversation. I think that we're having that tonight. Let's jump to the phones for a few more things and then I'd like to ask you a few questions as well. Mm -hmm. Lisa is on the line. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, well, I uh, have always wondered, I guess I could have Googled it, but you're right here. Um, why was Planned Parenthood supportive of the Affordable Care Act? What did they have to do with each other? That's a great question. Um, well, I think, I mean, there are lots, there's lots to that. I think part of it was we needed a solution to make sure to expand healthcare access. Um, and from, you know, I think from that perspective, making sure that, I think we need to remember like before the Affordable Care Act, again, from a women's health perspective, premiums for women were higher generally than men's um, because one of our pre-existing conditions is that we require reproductive health. And so one of the things that we liked, and this was a big boon mm -hmm. um, for you know, women activists, is that uh, you know, it, it leveled the playing field. It said that you know, that reproductive responsibility is something that we value across the board and mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're not gonna uh, you know, double charge women for that you know, pre-existing condition. Um, so that was a real gain. And especially when you see you know, here in um, you know, Tennessee where you have women that are caring for their younger, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the younger kids and also the elderly populations, a lot of, a lot of the benefit for the Affordable Care Act was really a, a benefit for women because they could make sure that their children were getting health care provided and as, as well as making sure that the elderly um, were getting that care. Um, so, I mean, there were a lot of reasons for, I think, the Affordable Care Act to be mm -hmm. something that we would mm -hmm. support. Okay. Lisa, thank you for your question. I'm going to move on to Skip here real quick. Skip, hi. Hi there. Hi there. I, uh, I really love the topic tonight, and um, I appreciate the health services that you guys provide for patients in our community. I'd like to know, what can I do to help support Planned Parenthood? Hmm. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so I think... Uh, there, there are a number of things. I think, and, and from the advocacy's perspective, which is kind of my bailiwick, sure. um, some of that will be, you know, helping uh, use your voice. I mean, that's that's the root mm -hmm. of advocate is mm -hmm. using your voice. So the first thing, uh, and that um, reminds me to address this point: Tennessee has an abysmal um, voter turnout rate. I mean, we're the mm. worst in the country, <laughs> um, like literally. That that is not. Uh, me being uh, dramatic, hyperbolic. Right. Uh, so, so I think to, one thing to really support Planned Parenthood is to make sure that you're registered to vote. And so, um, you can go to uh, proudvoter.org uh, slash pp um, and register there, and you can get reminders from Civic Tennessee about when um, elections are and that sort of thing. I think that would be baseline um, because I feel like. Uh, folks that share our values, that understand that parenting, um, and, and you know, and birth control, and women's health, and and all of those things that can be provided in a non-judgmental way, are are values that actually we see from polling is something that the majority of Americans and even mm -hmm. Tennesseans mm -hmm. share. Mm -hmm. So we lose ground on those issues, not because the opposition is so strong, but because we're not using our voice. And so one of the main things I would urge is to make sure that people are registered um, and, uh, and use their vote um, and are, are well informed about the issues. That, uh, very particular to Planned Parenthood, we're always looking for volunteers. So mm -hmm. if people wanted to write us at advocacy at PPMET, that's Planned Parenthood Middle East Tennessee, uh, advocacy at PPMET.org, there's a variety of different ways that they can support. Um, mm -hmm. We have uh, an incredible program called Shift the Conversation. Hmm. And what we do is we go door to door and we just talk with people. We're not trying to convince people to vote a certain way or like a certain candidate. Um, we don't even have like an electoral motive. It really is about connecting and breaking through the polarization to talk about these very issues and to combat abortion stigma 
which is the notion that somehow abortion is morally wrong mm -hmm. um, and, and like really connect with folks about uh, you know separating out kind of what people's thoughts are around abortion and really thinking about from a public policy standpoint um, who needs to be making the decisions around those kinds of mm -hmm. uh, those kinds of issues and from our perspective <clears throat> we believe that decisions regarding a woman's pregnancy need to be left up to a woman her family faith and doctor without any government interference so I think shift the conversation is something I think we also uh, would enjoy having volunteers at our health center mm -hmm. uh, to be part of cl our clinic greeter program so that our patients can feel welcome mm -hmm. and it's another way for people to get involved that way and we have trainings that people can come to so if they email us we can we can you, tell you them can find them a spot well yes. and, and I would add that we uh, there are multiple um, we would love to have you, Skip, come and uh, be involved at Planned Parenthood. And um, you can go to ppmet.org or to tennesseeadvocatesforpp.org and find out about volunteer opportunities, figure out ways that you can plug in. In the development world, we like to say that we hope that you will give us your time and your treasure. So another thing that you can do is donate. Donate to TAP or donate to uh, Planned Parenthood. And um, those uh, donor funds are um, desperately needed. Yes. So. Oh, and I want to. Sorry, sure. real quick. <laughs> See, I'm so excited to be here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do want to say when you give to TAP, it is non tax yes, deductible, right. but that's, that will allow us to do more electoral organizing, right. um, gotcha. which we do need. And, so. we, and we didn't quite clarify that in the beginning that we are a C3, Planned Parenthood Middle East Tennessee is a C3 uh, nonprofit tax exempt organization. Tennessee Advocates <clears throat> for Planned Parenthood is a C4 organization that. Uh, donations are not tax deductible but um, that allows you to do um, the important political work that you do yep. so wanna, thank you for that I want to kind of wrap up um, the, the talk on on this new law about um, pulling 10 care money from Planned Parenthood the governor mm -hmm. has signed it so what now what comes next for you all in this is there an appeal is there a push is what well, the first thing I want to say is to assuage any um, person that's on Medicaid in Tennessee to not worry that our doors have, are staying open and that they can still come to our health centers. There, mm -hmm. there still are several steps that will have to be taken before any um, impact from that legislation would be seen, and, and, and that, and it could be years. Okay. Yeah, but the, the state has to submit a waiver request uh, to the federal, federal government, government, and then that has to be approved. And the process may take um, a long time, and we will be fighting every step of the way and engaging all of our resources into ensuring that Medicaid patients, ten care patients, can continue. Uh, you know, it long into the future to see Planned Parenthood as a trusted partner. So right now, everything stays the same. Yes. Okay. That's Easy right. Easy enough. I also want to talk about a a, um, a bill that has moved its way through this legislative session uh, called the Heartbeat Bill, and this is something that mm -hmm. Senator Mark Pody talked a lot about uh, last week when he was on the show. And as I said at the beginning, we do want to give both sides of this equal opportunity. And that's why we invited mm -hmm. you all here today. Mm -hmm. um, this bill got changed throughout the throughout the session, and it ended here like this. Um, this Heartbeat Bill would require that an um, an ultrasound operator is required to offer women the results of that. Mm -hmm. ultrasound um, if she is seeking an abortion and the amended bill would also require the Department of Health to track the presence of heartbeats in abortion cases how do you all weigh in on this one sure um, well we're glad that they changed the bill from being unconstitutional you know because um, the, it the started original, as, as a yeah. heartbeat mm -hmm. is detective and abortion is illegal yes and essentially what that would have done is it, it would have uh, prohibited uh, abortion before a woman even knows she's pregnant right. oftentimes right. Mm -hmm. um, and so and and I think and I heard uh, uh, Representative Pody talk about uh, the them not moving forward with that because uh, Tennessee right to life understood that it was unconstitutional Constitutional, and they didn't want to have to spend the legal fees mm -hmm. on that. Um, and you know, from our perspective, I mean, all, all of our patients that are that are uh, undergoing ab abortion would have an ultrasound anyway. I mean, you have to do that for for medical purposes. So requiring um, an ultrasound, uh, we do anyway. The the, the in the original. Um, 
legislation where they were saying mandate was was an issue because again um, we think that a woman shouldn't be forced to do anything that she doesn't want to do um, we we would offer the the opportunities to see the um, ultrasound and she could choose to see so she, she can, wants. She can, yeah. can a woman say no I don't want an ultrasound? Sure. Yes. Okay. Oh no, no, no. They cannot say so, an ultrasound no, is yeah. part of the standard of care. Gotcha. Um, they are offered the opportunity to view it and they have the right to say yes or no and we support them in whatever decision they make. Okay. Mm -hmm. How will you track um, the heartbeat results that need to go to the Department of Health? How would that be tracked? I am actually not sure yet of the vehicle for that um, it is something that we're looking into so but I, in general even though we already provide ultrasounds mm -hmm. even though women already have the right to, to view or not view an ultrasound um, you know we see this for what it was uh, an attempt to restrict abortion um, originally if they had gotten their way it would have been a six-week ban and that is uh, I mean and, and to shame and coerce yeah, women yeah. I mean that's yeah. that's the other issue is that we don't believe that uh, information should be provided in a way to coerce a, per a person's mm -hmm. decision making mm -hmm. in one way or the other. Right. I mean, we really believe in that that uh, an individual ought to ought to know all of a, an array of pieces of information to make that right decision for themselves, and we mm -hmm. see that across the board. So, in this particular instance, I mean, and you heard him say it definitively that. The intention was to uh, essentially coerce women to opt out of an abortion, um, you know, and and so I think that that raises a, a value question, mm -hmm. um, and so and the reason why the reporting part is a part of it now is to create the evidence base after the fact, after the mm -hmm. legislation has already passed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I wanted to wade through that. We're going to take another quick break. We got lots of callers on the line. That's the first <laughs> thing we're going to get to after this commercial break. Stay with us.